Hello again, welcome to the Kidney Kitchen. You know I get very excited when we have a guest chef in the kitchen and today we have just that lady. Hey, how are you doing? Hi, I'm well, thanks. Hi, I'm Lai and uh, today we're making steamed custard buns from Hong Kong. I've never had a sweet bun before. Always had a one with a savoury filling, but never a sweet one before. Oh, you're in for a treat this time. These are fantastic. Oh, have you got enough to go around? Because I can see me eating about all those four there. <laughs> <laughs> there should be just enough for everyone. Fantastic. Let's get cooking. Tell us what we're doing first. Uh, we're going to add plain flour to this deep bowl. All in one go. Just for the dough, yeah? For our bun dough? Yeah, this yeah. is for the bread dough. Um, because it is a bread, it does need yeast, which is here. Oh, yeah. And then just to feed the yeast, we're going to give it some sugar. So all our dry stuff in first. All the dry stuff in. Perfect. Um, and then I have an electric uh, an electric uh, whisk, but with dough hooks. I like to just quickly mix the, uh, the dry ingredients together so it's well incorporated. Yeah. And then we now need to add the liquid. Yeah, so we just turn on the dough hooks on low speed First creating a shaggy dough. You're waiting for all of the moisture to be absorbed before adding a little bit more. A bit more? Yeah. Thank you. So you can see that the dough is slowly coming together. It will look very wet, but as you can see, we've still got loose flour and it's just about chasing that flour around the bowl. <laughs> So I'm just going to quickly combine it with my hands. As you can see, there's a bit of loose flour left. Um, sometimes it's just a little bit quicker to get your hands in there and combine that yourself. I'm now we're going to uh, go back with the dough hooks and we're now going to do this for about eight to nine minutes until it is smooth, elastic and paler in color. So a great tip is to take some oil and just run it down the dough hook to remove it from the very sticky dough. And You've done that before, haven't you? Look at that. Yeah, it's completely clean. So you just sort of bring it together now, do you? Into yeah, a nice ball. Bring, and, yeah, you yeah. want a really nice, nice tight tension at the top by just doing a book fold. Okay. And then sealing that book fold by just twisting it in your hands like this. Oh, yeah and you'll see that you have a very smooth top, which is beautiful to look at. Nice. And then a little bit more oil in the bowl, just so that it doesn't stick to the sides mm -hmm. as you... As it proves up, yeah. As it proves up. All done? Um, yeah, pull past me the cling film. Nice there you and go. tight. I like to leave it in a warm place, such as an airing cupboard or near a radiator. Here is some proved dough from earlier in the day. And what I'm going to do now is punch down this risen dough and portion it out into 12 equal weighted portions. So if you bring across yep. the scales, but remember it has to be on a flat surface. So I'm using a tea towel. That's 512 grams. May you divide that by 12 for me? Calculator, yep. That's about 42 grams each. 42 grams each. Yeah. Now you get the fun of dividing this into 12 and trying to get in as close as you can to 42 grams each time. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so we've now divided the dough into equal portions. We now need to make dough balls. And doing that, you take you take one portion and you do a small book fold. Again, just like before, trying to create surface tension at the top. You can either do a twist to try and seal it in like that. And another method is to place it on a surface or a plate and slowly drag back so that the dough tucks underneath itself and you still get that lovely mm. surface tension. So taking the cling film from earlier when we were proving the dough, we now, again, just prove it lightly again as we have manipulated the dough for about half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. So while the dough balls are resting, it's time to make the custard. So we go in 
with some white sugar, two whole eggs, and some cornstarch. The cornstarch is to help thicken the custard. Now we just mix it all together. Try to be particularly careful as corn flour is very fine. So it's quite easy to make a massive mess with this. So just gently at first until all the corn flour and sugar is combined and then you can start to add a bit of more strength in your stirring. It's coming together now. It's okay if it has a little bit of corn flour lumps because we're going to move this onto the stove later on. So taking the cream and adding it to a saucepan and of course some vanilla essence and you want to warm this up on a low heat until it just simmers and you can just leave that there until you see some small bubbles starting to form. So as you can see at the sides there are small bubbles forming and you can also see a skin forming so just give it a little shake and it's ready to pour into our egg mixture. Pouring the vanilla cream slowly into the egg mixture, whisking as you go along to not scramble the eggs. Just a bit at a time. Placing the pan back onto the stove. We're now moving the custard and cream mixture back into the pan. So you want it on a low heat to begin with, just so that you can get everything combined. And then you may want to turn up the heat slowly and just wait for a skin to form at the bottom and then gently push it to start, and, to, start to thicken the custard. So I believe we're starting to form a skin now. Best way to tell is if you just tilt the pan, you can see that there is something collecting at the bottom. And to prevent that from catching, you just want to stir it through and that will slowly thicken the custard. Once the custard is thickened, you want to take it off the hob and make sure when you pull down your whisk, the custard knits back together slowly or not at all. We're now pouring the custard into a plate, which will be cling filmed and put into the fridge. You want to gently lay it over top and then press down so that the plastic is in contact with the custard to prevent a skin from forming and then gently wrap and place into the fridge for about half an hour to an hour until solid. So we're going to make our own little steamer, aren't we? Yes, we are. Right. So all you need is a big pot. Some boiling water. Boiling water. All face up, half full. And your basket's on top. We've got the steamer on, so now it's time to fill the buns. Uh, First, we will divide the custard into 12 equal sections. Uh, so now we take the, the dough balls. I like to take the plastic and place it on the surface. They've proved that nice, haven't they? Yeah, Great super shape. fluffy. So we have a nice surface here. Take one of the dough balls.
Now to place the steamed buns in the basket. How long do they take? 10 minutes on high heat. And then once the 10 minutes are up, turn off the hob. Five minutes, lid on, don't open the lid. After five minutes rest, we can reveal the buns. Cool. Wow, this is really good. Those. So live, we've got Angeline with us today. Hello. She's been keeping an eye on all things we've been doing today. I know she's got a very, very sweet tooth. She'll be chomping at the bit to get into these. I'm That's desperate she, to try these. I know she will. They look yeah. amazing. Tell her what we've made. Tell her what we've got. Uh, so today we made um, steamed buns or custard bao. So inside is a sweet okay. filling. Oh, how fantastic. What a lovely tree for the end of the day. Wow. And I understand that these were something that you regularly made yes. when you were having PD yourself. Yes. So for people that don't know, PD is a type of dialysis and this is what you had for the three years. Not completely. This wasn't the only thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This is your treat. Yeah. This is something wow. you enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was on home PD for three years and uh, this was a very common weekend bake. So I would start on the Friday and finish it off on the Saturday. Wow. So a great way to pass the time as well. Very therapeutic. And, yes, incredibly yeah. so. Yeah. Um, I particularly enjoyed this recipe because it uses a lot of oil and uh, you can coat your hands in oil uh, frequently. Okay. Um, which when you're on PD, you are oh. constantly washing yeah. your hands and set up and coming off it. And I actually developed a hand eczema, but right. by making this dish repeated times, uh, it really did improve the condition on my hands. Brilliant. Great. Wow, wow. So yeah, yeah um, another good reason to make them. As well as probably tasting really good as oh, well. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to dive in. So do you break them up or you just... Yes, you can bite into it or you can split it open right. for a special reveal. A special reveal. Wow. Okay, that. So. Oh, yeah. With the custard inside. Yes. So light, aren't they? Yes. They smell amazing. That's a vanilla, isn't it? Mmm. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> You've oh. missed them. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> They're so tasty. Mmm. And they're low in potassium because mm. we've analysed them as well. So they are a great occasional treat for somebody that needs to watch their potassium. And one of the things that we changed, which you, you would find in like packet mixes, you mentioned mm. that they quite often use bicarbonate of soda to whiten the dough. Yes, so traditionally, if you were ever to order this in a restaurant or on a street market, they would be pure white. Right. So typical recipes or pre-mixes of flour tend to have a lot of bicarbonate soda to yeah. give that white, mm. perfect look. And in this case, we've taken that out, and which is why it has a more natural finish. Yeah. But it doesn't taste the taste. It doesn't change the taste no. whatsoever. No, no. But what it does do, which is really important, is it lowers the amount of salt. So that's that's really helpful that we didn't need it in this recipe. Yeah. Can these be frozen as well? Can they? Can you cook these from frozen? Yes. You can. Yes. So once you have fully steamed the buns, I would recommend placing them on a tray, put it in the freezer, wait for them to completely freeze, and then you can pick up each bun, put it in a bag, and then store it for, for, for a long time. And that's fantastic. It takes so, such a long time for making the dough yes. that you've then got that um, yeah. on tap, if you like, a ready-made oh, yes. pudding for when yes. you really need it. It's fantastic yeah. for going around people's houses. You can just whip it out of the freezer and come with the dish pre -prepared. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Love it. Well, thank you very much for making these. Thank you very these. much. They're thank delicious. You. Thank Absolutely. you for having me. Really good.